know that the nerve cells in our body works on the principle of electrochemistry. The cells in our body produces the electric current or signals which are the basis of the potential difference developed across the membranes, inner and outer membrane. Hello students, I am Dr. Rupasna. To know more about this topic, you may refer to the book by S. Chand Publishing, the e-book link of which is given in the description box. So, a recapitulation of the laws of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics talks about the conservation of energy. It says that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed, but can be converted from one form to another. The second law, on the other hand, states when the entropy of the universe is always increasing, we will always observe the rise in the entropy for a spontaneous reaction. A uh, third law of thermodynamics talks about the for a pure crystalline substance at absolute zero temperature, the entropy of that substance is zero. That means there is no randomness or no disordered structure at zero Kelvin. And this is the basis of finding out the absolute entropy also because if you integrate within the limits 0 to t at 0 the entropy of the perfectly crystalline solid is 0 so one can find out the absolute entropy so this is only the one function in the thermodynamics that can be calculated or or state function in thermodynamics that can be calculated uh, absolutely uh, Last one is the zeroth law, although it is not the last one, it was realized after first and second law, but uh, because first and second law were already established, they gave the name it to zeroth law, which talks about the thermal equilibrium between the three bodies. If A is in equilibrium with C, B is in equilibrium, thermal equilibrium with uh, C, then uh, A and B will be mutually in thermal equilibrium with one another. So after doing all these laws, the question comes that what is the need of thermodynamic function? Why do we need another thermodynamic function? The answer is that some of the reactions, we say that the spontaneous reaction have delta H should be less than zero or delta H should be negative. It approaches a minimum energy range. For some of the reactions or, or for spontaneous reaction, the criteria is that entropy of the system should be always increasing. But are these two parameters sufficient? The answer is no. It also depends upon temperature. So not only these two parameters, but a relation between these two as well as temperature determines the spontaneity. So there comes a new parameter called delta G. I will give you one example of uh, some of the reaction. Let's say we are dissolving sodium bicarbonate in water. Sodium bicarbonate is solid and on dissolving it in water, it forms sodium ions and bicarbonate ion. So entropically this reaction is okay because delta S is coming out to be positive. We are moving from a more ordered structure to a less ordered structure. I'll give you one more example where entropy of the system is negative. Suppose we are dissolving HCl gas in water. In water. So what is happening is H plus ions in H plus ions and Cl minus ions are getting formed aqueous. So we are moving from we are moving from a gaseous system to a liquid system. The entropy of the system is decreasing, but still this reaction is spontaneous. So that means that there has to be another factor which should answer the spontaneity criteria. So the criteria of spontaneity is given by Gibbs free energy, which is a relation between enthalpy, entropy and, and temperature. This is a fundamental relation between the three factors. You have enthalpy of the system multiplied with temperature and delta S. So for a spontaneous reaction, the change in Gibbs free energy should always be negative, should always be negative or should be less than zero. So what all are the criteria or the parameters by on which this depends. 
so value of delta s value of t delta s now remember that whenever we have delta h negative and t delta s positive so this is entropy is increasing delta h the system uh, is following exothermic reaction the system will always be spontaneous or the reaction will be will always be spontaneous the second parameter is suppose i have delta g as positive and delta s as negative then this reaction irrespective of the temperature will always be non spontaneous because this product will be positive and delta g will be positive so this will always be non spontaneous now what happens when the when delta h and delta s have same signs let us say we have negative signs of both so in this case uh, your temperature will determine the criteria of spontaneity see if i have this factor as negative and this factor again negative then this negative negative the whole thing will be positive this will be positive so what happens is unless i have a highly exothermic reaction i uh, cannot uh, make a spontaneous reaction this means that the first factor if it is negative highly negative then only the reaction will be spontaneous but what happens if if you write if you raise the temperature on raising the temperature t delta s will dominate and delta g will become positive so i can say that only it is spontaneous if t value is low if this factor is low on the other hand if both are positive when both are positive what happens delta h is endothermic reaction if this is positive then on only high value of t i will get this second term as negative so delta g will become negative that means the reaction will be spontaneous only at high temperature these are the factors or criteria that we have to remember so the gibbs free energy is is a state function and it calculates for a spontaneous and for a non spontaneous reactions what will be the trend we have studied about the normal trend of delta g what happens when we are moving on to a reaction system where equilibrium can also approach equilibrium is the reactants when starts producing product it does not mean that the entire reactant has to be converted into product there will reach a state where the no more reactants are getting converted into product that is the equilibrium is established the product also start forming the reactants again in case of equilibrium so suppose i am i am starting with some reactant and this is my free energy curve and this is my reaction profile this is called reaction profile that means your reactant is getting converted into product for a spontaneous change the delta g value is always negative but once it reaches equilibrium delta g value becomes zero there will be a dynamic equilibrium where the number of reactants getting converted into product will be same as product and getting converted into reactant so a dynamic equilibrium will establish and at that very point delta g will be zero so a spontaneous reaction is favored when your reactants automatically getting converted into product but if if you want product to form reactant then it will be a non spontaneous process and delta g will be positive now how this gibbs free energy is related to electrochemistry electrochemistry is a branch of physical chemistry that deals with the conversion of electrical energy and chemical energy interconversion so the electrochemistry has two parts one is the reaction in which chemical energy is converted into electrical energy and another is when electrical energy is converted into chemical energy when we supply electricity and a chemical reaction takes place that part is called electrolytic reaction or electrolysis and when the a chemical reaction takes place in the system and the energy electrical energy is produced that part is called 
the uh, electrochemical cells or galvanic cell or voltaic cell that we are going to study. So the energy released by a spontaneous reaction converted to electricity is Daniel cell or galvanic cell and electrical energy converted uh, used to cause a non-spontaneous change is electrolytic process. So in the electrochemistry, the transfer of electrons are responsible for the electrical current produced. So how electron transfer is taking place? That is a part of oxidation and reduction reactions. In a chemical reaction, we have oxidation and reduction taking place. So I've just given one example here that in the this particular case, the magnesium solid having zero oxidation state is getting converted into plus two oxidation state. So the electrons, it is releasing two electrons and oxygen gaseous in zero oxidation state is getting converted into minus two. That is, it is taking up two electrons. So, this is a fundamental aspect of any uh, electrochemical reaction that is a redox reaction when produced. It is, it is responsible for electron transfer and that electron transfer is uh, creating the electrical energy or electrical current. So before understanding the electrochemical change, we must know what is oxidation and what is reduction. Oxidation in, is a process which involves loss of electron, electrons and reduction is a process which involves gain of electrons. So a species which undergoes this change, we say that it is undergoing oxidation. Uh, and again, the species which undergoes this change is, we say that it is undergoing reduction. Uh, now, what is oxidizing agent or oxidant and reducing agent or reductant? An oxidizing agent is the substance which helps in the oxidation of the other by itself getting reduced. So, suppose I have a species A which is undergoing oxidation to form A plus and if this electron is being taken up by some other species and forming this product B, so we say that A is, in, is getting oxidized, that means A is helping B in undergoing reduction. So A is called reducing agent because it is helping other to get reduced by itself getting oxidized. And similarly B, because it is taking electron is undergoing reduction, is helping A to undergo oxidation by taking its electron. So B acts as oxidizing agent. A acts as reducing agent. Now, what is a cell potential? A cell potential is in the galvanic cell when you have oxidizing agent and reducing agent taken in two separate beakers and are connected via a salt bridge that forms a cell potential or a difference in the potential between these two cells is termed as cell potential. So, in Definition, we say that a pull or driving force on the electron that is called cell potential, E cell or electromotive force. Let us understand this by using a galvanic cell. A galvanic cell is made up of two half cells. In one beaker, we take zinc sulfate solution and zinc rod is dipped in it. Copper sulfate solution, copper rod dipped in it. Now, what happens when you do not have anything or these two are not connected with one another? Suppose I have a zinc rod and it is dipped in zinc sulfate solution, Zn2 plus and sulfate ions. And this is zinc rod. So, zinc has a tendency to lose electrons. What happens is, the metallic, if you just zoom this and understand, this metallic zinc uh, has a tendency to come to the solution by releasing its electron. So only momentarily the electrons remains on the rod. But they are not going anywhere because we have not connected it yet. In another beaker, you have copper sulfate solution and copper in the copper sulfate solution, copper ions, 2 plus sulfate ions, dipped. Uh, is the copper rod dipped inside it? Nothing is happening in this particular beaker. But copper 
when connected with zinc rod copper rod when connected with zinc rod uh creates a cell because the electron now electrons now here got a chance to get rid of from the this rod and then flows to the copper what happens in this then copper ion inside the solution takes up these two electrons and form copper solid so some copper starts depositing on the rod when these are connected via cell so because of this motion of electrons a cell is created so this is a this is a pictorial representation of a galvanic cell where here i have a zinc rod and zinc 2 plus and this is the movement of electron taking place from zinc electrode to copper uh, electrode uh, how to remember in which particular beaker oxidation will take place and in which beaker reduction will take place uh, remember that at anode oxidation will take place and ox and at cathode reduction will takes place so red cat red cat is reduction at cathode and oxidation at anode and movement i have already explained now once we have connected the two cells and the potential is generated uh, we also need a salt bridge to connect the two half cells a salt bridge is made up of agar agar jelly and filled with saturated solution of potassium chloride uh why do we need salt bridge the answer is uh once the reaction starts in this particular beaker what do you observe we observe that some of the zinc ions are coming from the rod to the solution and in this solution your sulfate ions are fixed in number but your zinc ions number are increasing because zinc rod is depleting and what is happening here since copper is going from this uh, ionic solution and getting deposited here the rod is becoming thick and in the solution sulfate ions are more in number and copper ions are less in number so electron neutrality is not maintained in the two half cells that is why we need a salt bridge to maintain this electron neutrality wherever there is a lack of ions the ions are given from the salt bridge so in part 1 we have covered what is a thermodynamic function called gibbs free energy and the introduction of uh, electrochemistry how a galvanic cell is made what are its requirements in the second part we will connect these two parameters and we will build a relation between free energy and the uh, electromotive force thank you to know more about this topic you may refer to the book by s chand publishing the e book link of which is given in the description box if you found this video interesting please like share and subscribe the s chand academy channel Also don't forget to press the bell icon for getting future updates thank you mission of the copyright holder